Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Um, I have the privilege of representing the House Marquis. Okay. The reason we're here today is the speaker has filed a federal civil rights lawsuit against Governor Paul Page. I've just confirmed that with the clerk's office that they received that. today to explain to the people of Maine why we have done that. Uh, the governor has admitted to blackmailing uh, Goodwill Hinckley, and we filed a, a lawsuit uh, this afternoon to make sure that he is held accountable for the abuse of power and blackmail. Uh, you know, I was, I was raised by a military chaplain and a public school teacher. Uh, they, they both taught me to always uh, give back to the community, to always uh, serve the public, and these are the values that led me into the profession that I chose to help average kids. These are the values that led me to serve in the state legislature. And these are the values that led me to apply for the job of president of Goodwill Hinckley. The board went through an exhaustive nine month uh, search, uh, 19 applicants. They decided that I was the most qualified applicant after that search based on clinical, administrative, and my ability to, to lead in state efforts. Well documented, the governor immediately uh, retaliated uh, illegally uh, by blackmailing the school, saying that uh, they would need to fire me in order to get the half billion dollars of funding. The governor's actions clearly violate the First Amendment right of every Maine citizen to have their legislator be able to speak freely and independently without the threat of the governor. The time has come that somebody has to stand up and say enough. Enough of the abuse of power, enough of the blackmail, and as a top legislative leader in the legislature, I accept the responsibility to make sure that the governor is held accountable for his blackmail. And we file this lawsuit not on just behalf of our family, but on behalf of every single main family every single Maine legislator, every single Maine citizen, every single private organization in this state, so that they are not in fear of the governor's retaliation, so that they can speak freely and independently without the fear of the governor's retribution, retaliation, or revenge. So this lawsuit is about that, and today starts that journey. And with that, we will take questions. Why did we, uh proceed against the governor individually instead of the office of the governor as the chief executive of the state. Uh, the speaker was very careful in making a decision not to sue the state of Maine. That's what he spoke and voted in the state of Maine. That's what he's here for. That's why he's taking a position. Who is that the prosecutor? We are not suing the state of Maine. We're suing one person and one person only. Uh, he happens to be the governor, but in this state and in this country, nobody is above the law. And so, we Americans, we Mainers, have a right to sue even the president, even the governor. And that's what makes our system work unlike other parts of the world. So it was a very careful decision by the speaker 
to only sue the governor, and only, he's only seeking uh, compensatory damages from the governor personally, and not from anybody else. So you're hoping to, to hurt the governor financially by making him pay compensatory and punitive damages and all, right? Well, well frankly, uh, when I first uh, began representing Mark, what I wanted to do was get the governor to change his mind. Because we got a lot of work to do here in Maine to make things better. I have four children, I have a granddaughter, uh, and the speaker has a young family too. So um, I tried to talk him out of it. So the last thing we wanted was a lawsuit. I have plenty of work. But once the governor said, after he's asked by me repeatedly to withdraw the threat, we had no uh, option. I had to file this lawsuit as a civil rights lawyer. Um, this is a lawsuit that has to be filed. And so no, that's not the point. But the governor needs to be told by somebody who will listen to him. And I think a federal court is probably the only place we can get that, that he has to stop the challenge. Not against his mark and the Speaker of the House, but lots and lots of other people. Anybody who dares to disagree with him, he thinks he could go after with state money, state taxpayer money. And that's got to stop for all leaders so we can have our government back. What are the damages? very happy to accept what a main jury decides based on the evidence. And that will be uh, absolutely appropriate, and we have a lot of confidence in a main jury to decide that. The I primary know. thrust of your act, the first question, go ahead, please. So, so if I could just, just follow up on that, I think it's really important for people to understand that this is not about the money. This is about righting a wrong. This is about holding the governor accountable for the fact that he blackmailed Goodwill Inc. Please, who provided a safe haven rat risk kids for 125 years. That's what this is about. This is also about making sure that this does not happen to any other family, any other citizen, any other private organization. Accountability has to happen or it will continue. That's why we filed the lawsuit. Mark, the governor said, as you might imagine, that this is all just political, that you're trying to exact revenge for last year's election and trying to keep him in a way that Democrats did last year. How do you respond to that? So this really is about one thing and one thing only, and it is about holding the governor accountable for blackmailing Goodwill Hinckley. That is all this is about, and making sure that this does not happen to anybody else in our state. He has threatened our democracy, our legislator, and every single family that has a different opinion than him. That's not, not the way our society uh, is supposed to, to run, and this is filed, not, again, not just on behalf of, of our family, but every single family in this state has a different opinion than the governor. Uh, that is the free speech argument. Right, and if you look at the complaint, at the end, what we asked for, first of all, is the federal court to tell the governor this would be illegal. We're violating federal law. We want the governor to hear that and that's authority. Secondly, we asked for an order that the governor stop doing this, not just to Mark Eves, not just to the Speaker of the House, but to all mayors. So those are the first two things we're asking for. They're the top priority. And I also would say, I, I signed this complaint. Um, and I have brought cases against the Office of Governor of Democrats, and they haven't been very happy with me. I am an equal opportunity civil rights lawyer. Um, so I signed this complaint because it states a very strong claim under federal civil rights law, not for any political. And the federal law was violated? Is... It's called the First Amendment, and uh, most of us are very familiar with it, uh, but some people, when they get a lot of power, uh, forget about it. David, can you talk a little bit about this handwritten you know, note this two times in do you be able to get that somehow? Right, I think we will get the note if it hasn't been destroyed. But we know about the note. The note's been confirmed. And the governor, uh, you'll notice here, when he made the threat, he did it in secret. So he wrote a letter and gave it to the press about why he didn't want the board to hire Mark. And the board considered those arguments and decided, no, you're wrong. So then he sent in secret a note. Now why does the governor do something in secret? Because he knows it's wrong. Because he does almost everything in public. Um, so then when Mark got fired and we had to tell the people of Maine what happened, he was in hiding for a few days. He would not tell the press whether or not he had made this threat. The following week, he finally admitted to it. So does the note matter at this point? The governor is defending, he is bragging about making this threat. So I, I think the note is kind of old news at this point. The question is, you know, why does this governor think that he can brag about withholding $500,000 from a private nonprofit organization just because he's mad at the Speaker of the House for not supporting his abolition of, of income tax and his position on against wind energy? Um, so that's what it's about. But doesn't he have the right to cut that funding if he 
he chooses. In the United States, we don't have dictators, so he has some discretion, but it doesn't include the discretion to discriminate or to break the First Amendment. So, for example, he couldn't say to the Goodwill Hinckley School, uh, I'm not going to give you the money unless you hire a Catholic or unless you fire the Catholic. So, that's an example there, pretty obvious that. Uh, discretion only goes so far. Nobody can uh, violate the law, including the governor. So this idea that he has some discretion to break the First Amendment. If he had just, if he had just, if he had just deleted the funding and didn't say why, would that have been okay? Well, that's not what happened. He's been very public about why. And if if he said the reason is I don't want a Catholic or I do want a Catholic, that would violate the law. So this is the same thing. Because he's given an illegal reason, and that has, a, that has an effect. He's doing this on purpose at this point because he wants to send a message. If you mess with me, you're going to lose your job. And nobody in Maine can afford to be in the legislature uh, and lose their job. It doesn't pay enough to have a family. So he's doing that on purpose. So that's why we have to deal with that. Because it's going to affect anybody who's even thinking of running for the legislature.